In this video I will show you how you can calculate the yield to maturity of a bond with a default risk. We will specifically look at a zero coupon bond because there are only two transactions, one when you purchased a bond and one at the end when you repaid, which will make the analysis easier as if we have a standard coupon bond, there is the additional issue that once the default happens, the coupon payments might change, and so we would need to know exactly when this default happens. So let's start with the following bond, which has a principal of $1,000. We assume further this bond has a maturity of 10 years, uh, expected return of 4%, which is equal to 0.04 and we assume that the default probability Q is 30% or 0 0.3 and that if there's a default of this bond we get back half of the value so our recovery value is $500. So with these five information points we can now calculate the yield to maturity of this bond considering there's a default risk. If there was no default risk, we would be immediately done. We already know that the expected return is 4%, so this bond would have an expected return and thus yield to maturity of 4%. But now there's a default risk. So to calculate the yield to maturity for a bond with a default risk, we need to go after a three-step procedure. The first step, we need to calculate the cash flows for each period of time in terms of that period of time. The second step is we calculate the price of the bond, so the present value or net present value of this bond. And in the last step we then use this present value together with the principal to get to the yield to maturity. So let's start with the expected value of this bond. So let's call this EV and this expected value is what we expect to receive after holding this bond for 10 years. So if there's a default, that's with probability Q, we get the recovery value, D, and if there's no default, that happens with probability 1 minus Q, we get the principal back. If we put the numbers in, we get 0 0.3 times 500 plus 0 0.7 times 1000 which is equal to 850. Okay, so if I buy this bond today I expect to get back $850 in 10 years time. So let's now calculate what the price of this bond would be today. So the present value today of these $850 in the future is equal to the expected value divided by 1 plus the interest rate r raised to the power of the number of years t. If we plug in the numbers we get 850 divided by 1.04 to the power of 10 and this will lead to 574.23 dollars. Okay, so we calculated if I want to purchase this bond with these characteristics, I need to pay today $574.23 and I'll receive back, or I expect to receive back in 10 years time, $850. Now we can calculate the yield to maturity. The yield to maturity is defined as the principal divided by the price to the power of 1 over the number of years and since it's a percentage we need to subtract 1 and multiply by 100. Plugging in the numbers we get 1000 divided by 574.23 in brackets raised to 1 over 10 minus 1 times 100 
and we get 5.7%. So what you can see immediately is, if there's a chance of default, the yield to maturity is higher than in the case of no default. Without default, the yield to maturity of this bond will be 4%, now it's 5.7%. In turn, this also means that knowing the yield to maturity of this bond with a probability of default does not allow us to directly calculate, okay, what is the chance of default, or what is the recovery value, or what is the expected return. So we need to have two of these three values plus the yield to maturity to be able to back out uh, the last missing value. Thank you for watching.